so this is the physical science section 12.2 lesson video. So remember, if you want an easy way to get all my videos in the same place, just subscribe because I'm not going to put them to my website. Alright, so section 2, we're going to talk about Newton's first and second laws of motion. So, Aristotle incorrectly proposed that force is required to keep an object moving at a constant speed. So he decided that when you throw a ball, the reason that it eventually falls and stops is because you weren't still throwing it. That's actually incorrect. Okay, technically, if nothing else is acting on that ball, when you throw it, it should just go on forever. That's what would happen in outer space. What makes the ball stop? Well, like we talked about in the section one video, air resistance and gravity. That's what makes the ball stop. Okay, so he incorrectly proposed that. Now, of course, we know Aristotle is very, very smart and made lots of discoveries, but this was one that was actually wrong for him. So Galileo concluded that moving objects not subjected to friction or any other force will continue to move indefinitely. So that's what I'm saying. If you have no air resistance, no gravity, and you throw a baseball, it's just going to keep going in that same direction at that same speed until some other force acts on it. Otherwise, it just goes on forever. So, Newton's first law of motion is, according to Newton's first law of motion, the state of motion of an object does not change as long as the net force acting on the object is zero. So, in section one lesson video, we talked about when you have balanced forces, which means the net force is zero, an object's motion does not change. All right, so for example, this boy shooting this basketball. We know that there's air resistance and gravity that hopefully are going to pull that basketball back down through the hoop. However, if we lived in a world with no gravity and no air resistance, that ball would just keep on going and just keep on going. All right, so that's Newton's first law. It's the state of motion of an object does not change as long as the net force acting on the object is zero. So inertia is the tendency of an object to resist a change in its motion. An object at rest tends to remain at rest, and an object in motion tends to remain in motion with the same speed and direction. Okay, so inertia is a little hard for people to understand, so that's why I put this second part. So an object at rest tends to stay at rest. So like this cat, he's just laying there. He's just going to keep laying there until he decides to do something else. Now, can we move the cat if we want to? Yeah, but we have to apply a force to the cat. So like if I went and pushed the cat off the chair, the cat will move. But if nothing else is happening, the cat's just going to remain at rest. Whereas an object in motion wants to stay in motion. This is the whole reason we have seatbelts. So this is a crash dummy. If you slam on brakes, your body when you're driving is already moving in one direction. If you slam on brakes, your body wants to keep going. So that's why you have this motion go on. So that's why we wear seatbelts so you don't hit your head on the steering wheel. Or worse yet, be ejected out of the car because your body has already, like say you're going 60 miles per hour, your body is already used to moving 60 miles per hour. If you hit something, your body doesn't want to stop. It wants to keep going 60 miles per hour. So that's why you get that whiplash. That's why you have people who are ejected out of vehicles through the windshield. Okay, that's why we have seatbelts. The seatbelt forces our body to stop with the rest of the car. So, Newton's second law of motion. According to Newton's second law of motion, the acceleration of an object is equal to the net force acting on it divided by the object's mass. So here's where a formula is going to come into play in just a second. So we'll plug in and work on some math. Mass is the amount of matter an object contains. Alright, so Newton's second law of motion says acceleration equals force divided by mass. And like I said, mass is just the amount of matter an object contains. We'll talk about the difference in weight and mass here. So A is acceleration, F is force, and M is mass. So acceleration equals force divided by mass. So let's talk some units here. Okay, well we already know from chapter 11, acceleration is meters per second squared. Mass is going to be kilograms, and from the previous section you should know that force is newtons. And remember, a newton is a kilogram times meter per second squared. So see, that's where newtons comes from, right there. Oh, oh gosh, my answer came up. Oh well, we'll just work this one out together. I don't know why that happened. <laughs> All right, so this is a car with a mass of 1,000 kilograms. So there's my mass. Accelerates when the traffic light turns green. If the net force on the car, so here's my force, 
is 4,000 newtons, what is the car's acceleration? So we know acceleration is force divided by mass. So I just plug in. My force is 4,000 newtons. My mass is 1,000 kilograms. So when I divide, of course, 4,000 divided by 1,000 is 4. And then my unit for acceleration is meters per second squared. Now let's say you couldn't figure that part out. Like, what are the units for acceleration? I don't remember. Well, remember, a newton is a kilogram times meter per second squared. And we're dividing it by a kilogram. So if kilograms is on top and on bottom, what happens to it? It cancels out. And so then you're just left with that meter per second squared. So if you forget the units for acceleration, you can always cancel your units. You just need to remember a newton is a kilogram times meters per second squared. And then, of course, here's all my work down here, too, because for some reason I had that where it came up immediately. All right, so let's look at a couple more to make sure you got it. Hopefully, okay, good. I was about to say, hopefully my answers aren't going to come up this time. All right, so pause the video as always and try this on your own and then check back and we'll see if you got it right. So it says a boy pushes a cart of groceries with a mass of 40 kilograms. So there's my mass. What is the acceleration? So I'm looking for acceleration of the cart if the net force is 60 newtons. So there's my force. All right, so we know acceleration equals force over mass. So then I just plug in. So my force is 60 newtons. My mass is 40 kilograms. So when I do 60 divided by 40, I get 1.5. And then my unit for acceleration is meters per second squared. Or, like I said, if you can't remember that, newton is kilograms times meters per second squared divided by a kilogram. And so again, those kilograms cancel and meters per second squared is what you're left with. All right, so hopefully you got that one right. If you didn't try this one on your own, try the next one. Because remember, it always helps if you try these on your own. All right, so just pause it, try it, and then we'll do it together. So an automobile with a mass of 1,200 kilograms, so there's my mass, accelerates at a rate of three meters per second squared. So that's my acceleration. What is the net force acting on the car? Okay, so as always, y'all, you have to be able to rearrange a formula. You are going to have a formula sheet, but if you can't rearrange it, you're going to get stuck not knowing what to do. All right, so acceleration equals force times mass. So we want to solve for force. That means I need force to be by itself. So we need to get mass on the other side. So how do you do that? Well, you just do the opposite mathematically. So right now we're dividing by mass. So what's the opposite of dividing? Multiplying. But remember, if you do something to one side, you have to do it to the other. So see, if I have mass on top and on bottom, it'll cancel. So then what I'm left with is force equals mass times acceleration. Okay, you've got to be able to rearrange formula. And so then we're ready to plug in. So my mass is 1,200 kilograms. And my acceleration is 3 meters per second squared. So 1,200 times 3 is, of course, 3,600. Now here's where you got to be careful on your units. We have a kilogram times meter per second squared. None of those are going to cancel. So you have two options. You can write all that. Kilograms times meters per second squared. Or, if you'll remember, a kilogram times meters per second squared is a newton. Our force, I mean, our unit for force is newtons. That's why, because nobody wants to write kilograms times meters per second squared. Okay, but I will accept that as your unit. If you put kilograms times meters per second squared, that will be fine. But just know forces and newtons. That's a little bit easier to remember. All right, so hopefully you at least got one of those, right? All right, so let's move on. All right, so let's talk about that difference in weight and mass now, because I brought that up in our other video. So mass is the amount of matter an object contains. Weight is the force of gravity acting on an object. That's why when you go into outer space, you are weightless. And when you go to the moon, you feel like you weigh less. You don't actually change in size at all. Like your mass remains the same. But because there's less gravity on the moon and there's no gravity in space, that's where that difference in weight comes from. Okay, so here we have a person on Earth 
their weight is 623 newtons, but when they go to the moon, which has about one-sixth the gravity, their weight is about one-sixth, 103 newtons. But did they change in size at all? No, their mass is 63.5 kilograms the whole time. Now, if you go to Jupiter, Jupiter is a lot larger than the Earth or the moon. The larger the object, the more gravity it has. So if you look, when the guy goes to the moon, uh, Jupiter, his weight increases to 1,582 newtons. But did he all of a sudden get super fat? No, his mass is still 63.5 kilograms. He looks exactly the same. All right, and then if you went to the sun, which is even bigger than Jupiter, he balloons out to 7,418 newtons, which is equivalent to about 3,914 pounds. So does this guy actually weigh that much? On the sun he does. Okay, but did he get really large? No, he's still 63.5 kilograms. So the person is the same size on all the different planets or the moon, it's, or the sun, because that's not a planet either, um, on all the different locations, let's say that. But his actual size didn't change. The amount of matter he's made of didn't change. So really when people say, I want to lose weight, they really want to lose mass. They want to physically get smaller. Because I can fly to the moon, and be one-sixth of my weight, but I'm not going to look any different. So what people really want to do is lose mass when they say they want to lose weight. So how do we calculate weight? Well, weight is based off of your mass. It's mass times gravity. So weight equals mass times gravity. So weight is the force of gravity pulling on you. So it has the same unit as force, a newton. And then mass has to be in kilograms. And then gravity's number is 9.8 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration due to gravity on the Earth's surface. So clearly, if you were on another planet or somewhere else, your gravity number would be different. But on Earth, we use 9.8 meters per second squared. So mass is a measure of the inertia on an object, or like I said, the easier thing to remember is the amount of matter an object contains. Weight is a measure of the force of gravity acting on an object. So if you go to a location with different gravity, your weight will change, your mass will not. The only way for your mass to change is like I could cut my arm off, my mass would change, okay, because I physically have lost part of my body. Um, on the moon, the acceleration due to gravity is about one-sixth that of Earth. So when you go to the moon, you're going to feel like, like when you're jumping and walking, you'll feel like you only have about one-sixth of the weight you do on Earth. Like you won't feel as heavy as you do on Earth because there's less gravity. So let's do this section assessment. So state Newton's first law of motion in your own words. So for Newton's first law of motion, we could say, well, let's click back and see what the... Um, PowerPoint says before we put it in your own words, because of course your own words are going to be different than my own words. Um, so Newton's first law of motion says, uh, the, according to Newton's first law of motion, the state of motion of an object does not change as long as the net force acting on the object is zero. Okay, so in my own words, I might say, if net force is zero, an object's motion doesn't change. But again, this is your words, so you put it in whatever words you want to. Okay, but I would say if the net force is zero, the motion of an object does not change. Then it says, what equation states Newton's second law of motion? Well, good, we don't have to put this one in our own words. Okay, so that is acceleration, or A, equals force over mass, or F over M. So acceleration, A, equals force over mass. So A equals F over M. That's the formula that we were using earlier. So number three, how is mass different from weight? Well, mass is the amount of matter an object contains. Weight is a measure of the pull of gravity on an object. Okay, so mass is the amount of matter an object contains. Weight is a measure of the pull of gravity on an object. Remember, weight is based on gravity. Maybe you can remember that because it has a G in it. Think of gravity when you think of the G. All right, so number four, describe an example of Newton's first and second laws that you observe, oh, this should say you, that you observe in a normal day. All right, well, Newton's first law says an object's motion doesn't change if zero net force acts on it. Well, in that example, you could think of the uh, two people or the two teams playing tug of war. If they have same forces in opposite directions, that flag in the middle is not going to move. That's a perfect example of Newton's first law. 
Newton's second law, remember Newton's second law talked about objects in motion stay in motion, objects at rest stay at rest. Um, so again, you can think of that crash dummy with the seatbelt. If your body is already in motion, you want to stay in motion, even if your car ends up stopping. And then you can calculate anything about that motion that you want using that formula. The acceleration equals force over mass. Alright, and so the last one, it says a dummy's mass is 75 kilograms. If the net force on the dummy is 825 newtons, which is our force, towards the rear of the car, what is the dummy's deceleration? I right, said so deceleration means we're doing a negative acceleration, but since it's calling it deceleration, we'll keep the number positive. All right, so we know, so we're looking for A in other words. So A equals F over M. So my F is 825 newtons, and my M is 75 kilograms. So I do 825 divided by 75, and so I got 11. And so then remember, our unit for acceleration is meters per second squared, or as I'll show you again, newtons is a kilogram times meters per second squared over another kilogram. The kilograms cancel, and so you're left with meters per second squared. Just as long as you get the meters per second squared, that's the important part. Regardless of if you remember that's what it is, or if you can't screw your units to get it. Alright, so hopefully you now know a little bit more about Newton's first and second laws of motion.